this time I'd like to bring back to the stage a very talented young lady, but she's going to entertain us in a different way. <laughs> I'd like to make sure I'm bring up the introduction of our keynote speaker today, again for you, Miss Victoria McDowell. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Emmett D. Carson is the founding CEO of Silicon Valley Community Foundation. An international thought leader in the field of philanthropy, in 2006 he led the unprecedented merger of two community foundations creating SVCF. With the growth in assets from $1.4 billion to over $8.2 billion, SVCF is the nation's largest community foundation. SVCF's 2,000 family and corporate donor funds support a wide range of causes in the Bay Area, across the nation, and around the world. Before this, Dr. Carson had a distinguished 12-year career as CEO of the Minneapolis Foundation and prior to that oversaw the Ford Foundation's U.S. and global grant-making program on philanthropy and the nonprofit sector. Dr. Carson has published more than 100 works on philanthropy and is an authority on issues of social justice, public accountability, and African-American giving. He is constantly recognized as one of the most influential nonprofit leaders in the U.S. and has honorary degrees from Indiana University, Morehouse College, Becker College, and the National Hispanic University. Dr. Carson received both his master's and Ph.D. degrees in public and international affairs from Princeton University and his bachelor's degrees degree in economics Phi Beta Kappa from Morehouse College. Now please give a warm welcome to Dr. Emmett Carson. Victoria, thank you for that spectacular introduction and for your wonderful voice. Give her another hand. I also want to thank all of the honorees and, uh, and thank the wonderful uh, people who have performed for us. The singer, the spoken word, the performance that we had, they were all great. I haven't heard Trouble the Water in a long time and I needed it, so thank you. Thank you very much. I want to uh, acknowledge Milan. He's here somewhere for his uh, wonderful and infectious leadership of the African American Community Services Agency. So Milan, thank you for all that you, you are doing and will do. Allow me a husband's pride to recognize my wife, Dr. Jacqueline Copeland Carson, and you can see where she gets her beauty from her mother, Willette Copeland, who's here as well. And lastly, I want to recognize my boss, Samuel Johnson, chair of Silicon Valley Community Foundation, and his wife, Della. Now, when Milan called and extended the invitation to speak today, I told him that I wasn't sure whether I would have a lot or a little to say. I also told him that I didn't know that whether saying a lot or a little would be a good thing or a bad thing. I said this because of my deep and growing belief that our nation's democracy is at grave risk. I am keenly aware that whenever I speak publicly that I am the spokesperson for Silicon Valley Community Foundation. I'm proud that the Community Foundation is a local and national leader helping individuals, families, and corporations achieve their philanthropic goals locally, nationally, and around the world. 
The Community Foundation is a big tent of varied interest and ideas about how to make our community and our world better places. Like all nonprofit organizations, the Community Foundation is required by law to be nonpartisan and nonpolitical. Nonpartisan simply means that the nonprofit organization does not have a preference for a particular political party or candidate. Nonpolitical means that the nonprofit organization is not motivated or concerned with the political implications of its actions. Unfortunately, too many people, even those within the nonprofit sector, incorrectly interpret this as meaning that nonprofit organizations are prohibited from advocating or lobbying on behalf of public policy issues. If this were true, Dr. King could not have done all the things we are here to celebrate and remember him for through the nonprofit organization he founded, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Unlike private foundations that represent private interests and are prohibited from lobbying in favor or against legislation, community foundations have diverse community boards hundreds of donors, and can by law directly lobby on behalf of their values. Silicon Valley Community Foundation actively lobbies at the local, county, state, and federal levels on issues of housing, education, immigration, and income inequality. Now, I provide you with all of this context because I have decided that I have a lot to say. But I won't take too long. To do anything less than to speak truth to power, given current events, would dishonor the life and legacy of the man who we are here to honor. A man who said to remember him as being a drum major for justice, a drum major for peace, and a drum major for righteousness. A man who asked that we remember that he tried to give his life serving others, that he tried to love somebody, that he tried to be right on the war question, that he did try to feed the hungry, that he did try to clothe those who were naked, that he did try to visit those who were in prison, and that he tried to love and serve humanity. The preamble of our Constitution proclaims, we the people, of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America. In his historic speech, at the 1963 March on Washington, Dr. King asked that the nation make good on the Constitution's promise. He said, quote, we've come to our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. And so today we find ourselves in a country that seems no longer to proclaim justice and liberty for all. The promissory note that Dr. King felt the country owed to every American that had been marked insufficient funds is today marked account closed and return check to sender. The question before all of us isn't what Dr. King would do. We know the answer. The question is what will each of us do to confront the challenges facing our democracy? At this very moment, 
We have U.S. citizens struggling for their lives in Puerto Rico who are in desperate need of water, food, shelter, and medical supplies, while our country's leaders ponder how much the relief effort will cost. We bear witness to incontrovertible evidence of global warming as our oceans rise and 500-year floods and storms happen with increasing frequency our country's leaders choose to withdraw from global climate agreements. We understand the need to require everyone who drives to have auto insurance. While we have passed tax reform that is estimated to result in 13 million Americans withdrawing from the health care system with promises to take it away from the remaining 17 million people. I would observe, observe that Dr. King once said, of all of the forms of inequality, injustice in health care is the most shocking and inhumane. Silicon Valley Community Foundation is a steadfast champion for inclusiveness, diversity, and the acceptance of immigrants in our community. And so President Trump's comments and actions on race, diversity, and immigration are especially troubling as we remember Dr. King's dream of racial equality. We have a president who is advised by alt-right white nationalists and has refused to denounce either the ideology or the violence of neo-Nazis and white supremacists. We have a president who has spent more time talking about the appropriateness of the name of the Black Lives Matter movement and whether NFL players should take a knee during the national anthem than he has, than he has spent on the reasons for their actions the unjustified murders of African-American men and boys by rogue police officers engaged in domestic terrorism. We have a president who has put in motion efforts to deport 800,000 undocumented immigrant children who know no other home than America. What would Dr. King, who was called the dreamer, say and do about efforts to deport kids who are called dreamers? We have a president who at the end of 2017 announced that 300,000 Salvadorian and Haitian refugees who have been working and paying taxes must leave the country. And unbelievably and painfully, on this very day, when the nation observes, remembers, and recommits to Dr. King's dream of racial equality and inclusion, we have a president who must publicly state that he isn't a racist, following widespread reports that he referred to immigrants coming from El Salvador, Haiti, and the 54 nations of the African continent as coming from shithole countries while wanting more immigrants from places like Norway. <laughs> These statements and actions are not reflective of, a, of an America created by immigrants to establish justice and secure the blessings of liberty for all. To illustrate just how far we have moved away from the universal values that we all once widely accepted about what America stands for, let me offer this quote. How sacred is our trust. We to whom God has given the custody of the name and the song of freedom. America represents something universal in the human spirit. I received a letter not long ago from a man who said, 
quote, you can go to Japan to live, but you cannot become Japanese. You can go to France to live and not become a Frenchman. You can go to live in Germany or Turkey and you won't become a German or a Turk. But then he added, anyone, anybody from any corner of the world can come to America to live and become an American. Now, now who spoke these words about America's promise and song of freedom for immigrants? Wait for it. Wait for it. Former President Ronald Reagan. That's how far we've come. That's how far we've come. That is the proof point for the challenge to our democracy. The question before us is, will the America of the future offer the promise of a better life for all or only a few? That is the national issue we have to help answer, that it is a nation for all of us. Now, I know you're getting antsy, so I'm going to bring it home in a minute. The problems aren't all national. Here in the great state of California, we have work to do. California's traffic fines are among the highest in the country, totaling $400 or more. African Americans and Latinos are disproportionately stopped and ticketed and therefore more subject to these fines. The Community Foundation is supporting SB 185 to change this. Join us. Notwithstanding championing a new law, SB 359 that requires eighth grade children to be placed based on their test scores and not subjective teacher assessments, we have learned that some school districts continue to violate the law by placing kids who have passed their eighth grade test to repeat the, that math in ninth grade. The Community Foundation is committed to ensuring that the new law is enforced. Join us. East Palo Alto is unable to engage in business development that would bring jobs and housing to their community because of their limited water allotment. Yes, you heard me correctly. Their water allotment has been constrained due to agreements made before they were even incorporated. Why should East Palo Alto be unable to take advantage of Silicon Valley's tech boom, unlike the adjacent cities of Mountain View and Palo Alto that have more water than they can actually use? The Community Foundation will be bringing attention to the inequity of this issue in the coming weeks. Join us. And here in San Jose, the Community Foundation has begun partnering with the police department to improve police community relations so that we can minimize and hope to avoid the distrust and anger that rightfully exists in my hometown of Chicago and other major cities. Join us. When I was growing up, I used to feel disappointed that I had been born too late for the Civil Rights Movement. I felt that I was receiving all of the benefits without having had to make any of the sacrifices. Attending Morehouse College, Dr. King's alma mater, I was instilled with the idea that we all have a responsibility to serve the greater good. 
In a global society in which we are all increasingly interconnected, I have come to believe that yesterday's civil rights movement is today's human rights movement. When the history of this time period is written, will they say of us, as we can say of Dr. King and those who marched with him, that we have been drum majors for justice, drum majors for peace, and drum majors for righteousness. If they can, we will have honored Dr. King in the most meaningful way possible. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dayana Reddick, and I am honored and privileged to be here with you all to honor the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Jesus loves 